Oh my god. I haven't seen you guys in so long, I hardly recognized you. Sorry about that. It's been a busy summer. It's been a great summer, but it's been a busy summer. Hope you guys have had a good summer. We've missed you, and guess what? We're back. Now, just like old times, let's go see the one and only Steve Hayes, Tired Old Queen at the Movies. See what he's got for us this week. Johnny! Oh, good! <laughs> Tired Old Queen at the Movies! <gasps> Johnny, I hadn't done a Hitchcock movie in a while, so I decided to do Alfred Hitchcock's own personal favorite of all the films he did. 1943's Shadow of a Doubt, starring Joseph Cotton, Teresa Wright, Patricia Collins, McDonald Carey, and Henry Travers. When Hitchcock first came to America, he, from Great Britain, Selznick had brought him over to direct Rebecca. Welcome home, Mr. DeWinter. Thank you, Smith. For his first, like, maybe three movies, he did sort of variations on English life, but shot them over here. But they were like English movies shot here. And he really needed to do a movie that captured Americana. So he got <laughs> Thornton Wilder. And Thornton Wilder, who was the top American writer at that time, who had written Our Town, wrote a screenplay called Shadow of a Doubt, a story about a small town girl who lives in Northern California. And... Her mother's brother, her uncle Charlie, comes to visit. Now, she's also called Young Charlie, and Uncle Charlie is very, very special. Look, Pop, here he is. Unbeknownst to her, her Uncle Charlie is a serial killer. Uncle Charlie, you're not sick. That was the funniest thing. Sick, me sick. He's called the Merry Widow Strangler, and he's on the run. <laughs> the last place anybody's going to look for him is in Santa Rosa, this little town in Northern California where everybody's safe. At first, he seems sort of remote. He has his own exit and entrance in the back of the house. And her mother, who's played by Patricia Collins, who played Birdie in The Little Foxes, such a vulnerable actress, so wonderful. She just loves her brother. Charles, it's so wonderful to have you here. Emmy, Emmy. And suddenly, a light has come into her life and made her happy. And Teresa Wright is so thrilled that her mother is so happy that her, that her uncle is there. And this handsome young man approaches her and begins asking her questions about her uncle. And she doesn't know who he is. She's kind of attracted to him. There's kind of an antagonism, but there's a little bit of attraction there. And gradually he starts to plant the seeds that he thinks that her uncle is a killer. Charlie, think. How much do you know about your uncle? Well, he's my mother's brother. What's he got to do with it? Now... While this is going on and she's beginning to start to look at her uncle differently, her father has a best friend who lives next door who's played by Hume Cronin. And Henry Travers is her father. And every night, Hume Cronin always shows up at dinner time, And they start talking about how they would kill each other. The best way to commit a murder... I know, I know. Hit him on the head with a blunt instrument. Well, it's true, isn't it? Listen. They are murder obsessives. And they're always thinking, you know, Hume Cronin will come in and go, I've got it, I've got it. I put you with a sash weight in the back of a car and dump you in the river. And then, you now, 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 the police would be on to you in no time. The best way to kill somebody is to sneak up behind him. And, put, and, and Teresa Wright says, why do you always have to talk about murder? And her father says, we're not talking about murder. I'm talking to Ed. He's talking about killing me, and I'm telling him how I would kill him. Now, Ed, how we would do <laughs> So it's got that kind of dark humor, which is so, so Hitchcock. <laughs> For all you knew, you, you might just as well be dead now. Cotton, he was absolutely the perfect Hitchcock villain. You know, Hitchcock used to say that the better the villain, the better the picture. And I've said this before. And he liked a villain who had a little bit of a sense of humor and who caught you off guard. Who better to cast as a, kill, as a killer than the nicest guy in town? And gradually, as she starts putting things together, she starts noticing the things that he says. Like one night they're sitting at dinner and he's just talking and she's sitting next to him. And they're having dinner conversations. Everybody's kind of talking at once. And he's talking to his sister at the other end of the table. And he says, I've seen widows like your friend there. Those widows, they get left all that money. And what do they do? They cluck and they play cards and they lead useless lives. Horrible. Faded, fat, greedy women. And Teresa Wright says, well, they're human beings. And he looks at, they, Hitchcock does this close-up and he looks in the camera and he goes, 
Are they? And it's so chilling. You, oh my God. And it's pretty soon, he knows that she's on to him. She, she doesn't make sense talking like that. I'm worried about her. Roger, go get her. Ring her back. I'll go. You stay here and finish your dinner. But at one point, he says to her, What's the matter, Charlie? You think you know something, don't you? You go through your ordinary little day, and at night you sleep your untroubled, ordinary little sleep filled with peaceful, stupid dreams. And I brought you nightmares. This movie will bring you nightmares. Teresa Wright, Joseph Cotton, and Alfred Hitchcock's Shadow of a Doubt. Let's all go to the lobby. Hitchcock with Tourette's. Yes, this is Alfred Hitchcock. Woo! Things to eat.